every other religion and mythology ever plays an integral part in, like, everything. Um, and I think a common misconception about the underworld is that it's really, really bad, and it's got a very negative connotation, but it really shouldn't. There are a lot of positive things associated with it, as well as negative things. When somebody dies, their soul becomes disembodied, and it then goes to the underworld. Um, the underworld, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is ruled by Hades, who is the god of the dead as well as the god of riches, because riches are under the world, like diamonds and things. The underworld in most myths is either located underneath of the surface of the earth, however in some myths, very few, it is actually located on the edge of the ocean, which nowadays we know is not possible. But Back then, the Greeks did believe that. Because they didn't know what was after the ocean, so well, maybe dead people were there. Um, the journey to the underworld is fairly straightforward. Somebody dies, and then their soul, or like their body's essence, leaves their body, and they are guided by Hermes to Chiron, who then ferries them through the river Styx to be judged. Chiron usually is depicted as kind of an older, scraggly kind of man. Usually, with, you know, he pushes them through the river on a raft with a very large stick. Um, if any of you have ever seen, you know, images kind of like that, that's where that comes from. Um, when, after Chiron ferries them through the river Styx, they are judged by three infamous judges. Minos, Achis, and Rhadamanthus, and uh, they are judged to go to one of three destinations originally, most of which will go to the fields of Asphodel, which is kind of like limbo, like there's nothing good going on, nothing bad going on, they're just kind of wandering around with thousands and thousands of other people. Uh, people who are judged to have lived a positive life and make a positive difference go to Elysium, which is a sort of paradise type place, and if they're feeling really risky, they can go live through life again, and then if they're judged to live a good life again, they go to Elysium again, and then they can do it a third time, and if they're judged to live a good life again, then they go to the Isles of the Blessed, which is like very, a very positive place that everybody really wants to get to. And the damned, or people who are thought to have made a negative impact on the world and lived a bad life, go to Tartarus. Or if they're really, really, really terrible, they get personal punishments from Hades himself, and they are banished to the fields of punishment. When they're in the fields of punishment, they don't just get punished once. Many times they get punished over and over again for the rest of their existence, or until escaping the underworld. Anybody need Tartarus. Um, many of you have heard of Tartarus. It is usually stated as the deepest part of the underworld, and it is almost impossible to leave. Yeah, Tartarus is depicted in like, a lot of different ways. I feel like there are a lot of kind of more or less con contradicting myths about it. It's like like a bottomless hole. Like if you are banished to Tartarus, oftentimes. It's depicted as a place where you just you're like accelerating by gravity, like eternally. You're just falling forever. But then in some myths, there there are stories about like Tartarus or Kronos leaving Tartarus, and it's like, well, if he's falling forever, this seems like a real feat. Like I'm not sure how this is happening. But it's usually depicted as a bottomless hole. Kronos, the king of the Titans, also the father of Zeus and Poseidon and many of the other gods. Um, was banished to Tartarus, and it will, or is said to remain there for the rest of, you know, his existence, which, as a type, should be forever. Um, more on Tartarus, uh, people inhabiting Tartarus, obviously Kronos, he's, he's the big one. Uh, many monsters are also in Tartarus, the hundred-handed ones, which are close relatives to Cyclops, were banished to Tartarus when the gods took over. And uh, many, many Titans were, most of the Titans were banished to Tartarus. However, some exceptions are Atlas, who holds up the world, 
and Prometheus, who kind of like, you know, switch sides from the Titans, so uh, presumably Zeus gave him a more lenient punishment. Do we have any anything? Um, some of the myths, or one of the important myths about the underworld is that of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus was a satyr, and his wife Eurydice um, died. He was very much in love with her, so he wanted to save her life, and bring her away from the underworld. To do so, he came to, say, or to Hades and sang to him. And Hades is usually depicted as an evil man, but actually felt for the guy and uh, granted him entrance into the underworld. And where he granted him entrance, um, a new permanent entrance to the underworld now exists. Um, the caveat to that is when he goes in to the underworld, he can save his wife. However, he must turn around and leave, assuming that she is following him and could not turn around and look at her. He has to assume she is following him. If he does turn around and look at her before exiting the underworld, she will remain there forever. Well, he looked at her. Uh, yeah, on top of that, like Orpheus was was a demigod, so one one god parent and one human parent, and his his god parent was Apollo. So he was very very talented musically. So that's really what got him the gate, like Scott touched on. Uh, he impressed Hades with his musical ability. So we gotta get to the end of the world. Alright. We'll now go on to one of the most important beasts of the underworld, Cerberus. As you all know, usually Cerberus is depicted as a three-headed dog. Um, he's really the gate guardian to the underworld. He essentially prevents any living souls from entering the underworld, or especially preventing any soul at all, living or dead, from exiting the underworld. Um, one thing most people don't know is Cerberus is actually the spawn of a creature known as Echidna, and Typhon, a monster so powerful that all of the gods actually fear it. A little more to touch on Cerberus. Uh, is, I'm sure you've all heard of Hercules, where he had he had his uh, myth of his twelve trials that he had to go through, and one of the trials was that he had to like he had to defeat Cerberus without using any weapons. And uh, after, after he did capture Cerberus, he carried this massive beast to the surface as one of his 12 trials. Uh, he did this because the person who issued the 12 tasks to him, um, Hercules did not like him. And he asked Hades permission to carry Cerberus to the surface in order to scare this man, whoever it was, um, as sort of almost payback. Okay, a little bit of geography of the underworld is that there are five rivers in the underworld, most notably the River Styx. Also, um, Acheron, the River of Pain, Leith, the River of Forgetfulness, Phlegathon, the River of Fire, and Cocytus, the River of Wailing. And according to myth, Anybody who touches the river Leith uh, completely loses all of their memories. Isn't that the same as forgetfulness? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's the same reference to the same river. Oh. River of forgetfulness. A little more on the river Styx. Um, the river Styx is definitely the most popular of the five rivers. Um, it's obviously located in the underworld. When gods swear to each other, they actually swear upon the river Styx, as most of you know, um, because it forms a binding agreement. And the myth about Achilles is that he was actually held you know, by his ankle in the river Styx, that 
that is what granted him his near invincibility, except for obviously his ankle. Why not his ankle? Because he was held by his ankle, by his mother. And that part of his body wasn't in the river stick, so it wasn't granted. That was the only part that was not actually invincible. Which ankle? Whatever's was down. Are you guessing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can imagine, there are a lot of famous people in the underworld. These people include uh, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Vincent Van Gogh, Adolf Hitler, even Achilles is still hanging around there. Uh, Hades is down there, Persephone is trapped down there. But Achilles, or Hercules is, is not. After he completed his 12 trials, he was granted uh, immortality. So, yeah, he, he doesn't spend a lot of time in the world. That's nice, Frank. Um, <laughs> some underworld geography. Uh, the underworld contains a pomegranate tree, and if an individual were to eat a pomegranate from that tree, they would never be allowed to leave, ever. Um... There are obviously people always trying to escape the underworld in contrast to the pomegranate tree, tree thing. Um, there are like holes constantly popping up because there are so many people attempting to leave the underworld and it's such a large place that there is a god in charge of making sure nobody leaves and his name is Thanatos. And uh, in myth, he has been captured and when that happens, people are capable of leaving the underworld, even Tartarus somehow, this bottomless hole, I don't know, I'm not sure how they get it done, but uh, when, Thanos, when Thanatos is, is captured, it opens the doors of death and people are capable of exiting the underworld. And we could all assume how that would not be a good thing. Bad thing. Yeah. Only one Van Gogh running around. Sounds like the apocalypse, man. Um, some important monsters that come from hell, or from heat, or um, underworld, um, Hellhounds, all forms of hellhounds originate in the underworld. Um, that includes all sort of, you know, all relatives of hellhounds. There are tons and tons of different species that the Greeks believe came from hellhounds. And all of those originate from underworld or from Tartarus. And any, uh, any super powerful monsters that, like uh, Echidna and Typhon, for example, like Cerberus gave birth to all originated in the underworld. There are a lot of monsters that came from the underworld because there are so many monsters trapped in the underworld and they give birth sometimes. Um, I hope that you all now know a bit more about the underworld. <laughs>